Today we are headed to one of the possibly ugliest parts of Utah, but I actually think it's really beautiful. We are going to the Bonneville Salt Flats. Now it's not really known for off-roading. Uh, you know, it's known for land speed records. And also I don't like driving my personal vehicles on it because the last time I did that, I had salt falling off for like four years. But that being said, I think it's just one of the most magnificent places on earth. It's only two hours from my house. And I've had a long week where I've been on a computer way too much. And I just needed to point forward and go. Uh, I'm riding solo today. And see, it's like funny, I'm actually a little nervous about doing that because there are some mountains that I plan on climbing while I'm up there. But you know, let's just hope for the best. So there are not many landmarks uh, on the way from Salt Lake City to uh, essentially what's called West Windover, where the uh, Bonneville Salt Flats are. But one of the things that you see, and it's sort of one of uh, something you might see in, in pictures of Salt Lake City or Utah when you visit, is the Kennecott Mine. This is one of the largest mines for copper in the entire world. And uh, the smelter is the height of the Empire State Building. Let's check it out. So there it is, 1,215 feet tall. 1% of the world's copper has come out of this mine and it's still in operation today. This whole damn mountain must be made out of copper. I gotta tell you, as somebody who came out of a Jeep Wrangler into an LX470, one of the things that never ceases to impress me is just highway cruising. I'm passing semis doing 80 miles per hour. That is a speed limit out here in uh, Western Utah. And you know, I could have never done that in my Jeep. I remember driving to Vegas for the first time in my Jeep and I was topping out at 65 miles per hour in an 80 mile per hour zone, or maybe even 85. And it took me like an extra hour to get there. And that just sucks to be totally honest. So it's cool to be able to fly to your destination in total comfort and still hit all the trails and obstacles that you want to hit once you get there. Okay, what's this you might ask? That is a salt mine. They're literally harvesting salt from the Great Salt Lake. You see a lot of standing water out here. And let me tell you from experience, you do not want to drive into it. I almost got swallowed one time when I drove my uh, Wrangler into some wet sand near the salt flats. And it took years to get all of that sand to come off of my vehicle. This might be one of those situations where people need to learn a lesson. Now my question is, should I try to help? So, so straight, like make your tires a little bit straighter. Like that? Uh, other way. Okay, now try to go forward. Am I still on the track? Yep, you're doing good. Left a little bit, left a little bit. Okay, straight. Keep going right forward? Right there, yeah, if you can keep going forward. Okay, stop. Now reverse. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, stop. Hey, so we're on the road. Man, I finally got a good camera person on a little rescue. My memory card died. I can't believe it. It's so funny, as I was saying on the way down here, you never drive off road on this stuff, ever. It is like quicksand, it's like salt. It looks really hard at first, like because you know, it gets the, the, the material that we're driving on gets deeper the further out in the lake you go, right? But the outsides, kind of by the road, it's usually a little crustier, there's a little bit less water in it. So we just rescued these nice ladies. They're on their way to California, it looks like. I'm just glad that uh, they got help because it's 28 degrees outside and you know if you've never done this stuff before it's really hard to know what to do. So pretty cool. We're still on our way to the salt flats. I feel good. All right up ahead we have the uh, Utah tree. This was created in 1986. It's one of the mo many beautiful land art uh, pieces here in Utah. Kind of like spiral jetty with sun tunnels. There's a little fence around it because pieces of tile are falling off of this weird little object every year and they want them to fall on people's heads. Here we have the exit for the Bonneville Speedway. What I like about that sign is, you know, people who are from out of town would expect to see like a big stadium or, you know, some grandstands, just somewhere where you would see people watching 
cars race. That's usually what a speedway, you know, entails. But here it's just a blacktop road that ends in a big piece of salt. That's it. Okay, we are on the last few miles of pavement before we hit the actual salt flats. I want to remind you all once again, don't drive over here on this stuff. It actually looks pretty good today, but you can judge, you know, the moisture by the color of the, the dirt. So if it's darker, it's wet. And if you're not familiar with the area, you know the last time it rained, you could get into some real trouble and it is a long walk back to civilization. So we're gonna go tackle these mountains right over here on the back side of the Bonneville Salt Flats Raceway. I see some nice little trails, they look super freaking steep. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. 